Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And this is the first video in a brand new series called Interview with the Expert. Uh, basically, in this series, I'm going to be talking to YouTubers or people that are knowledgeable about the game, and it should give them a voice on this channel and just be something refreshing, different than just me talking the whole time. Should be nice to hear another living person on the channel. Uh, so, very excited to welcome our first guest in this series. It is Brutus from Brutal Raids. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, Bisector Tron? Thanks for having me, man. It's, I'm um, really humbled that you asked me to do this. Thank you. Yeah, um, definitely. I definitely wanted to reach out to you. Um, I've been aware of your channel for a while now. It's been growing and uh, you're putting out some great content. So, uh, but just so you guys know, it's really clear. His YouTube channel is Brutal Raids. Definitely recommend subscribing if you haven't already. I will link his channel as well as an interview that was reciprocated. I, uh, he interviewed me and you can learn more about kind of me personally in that video if you're interested. So I'll link all that stuff in the description. But this video is going to be focused on Brutus um, talking about him personally and then we'll transition talk about um, how we uh, got into Clash of Clans and talk about what he thinks of the game right now. So how's that sound? Can we get going? Yeah, we can get going. And again, thank you for letting me interview you on my channel, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun, and I, hopefully we can have even more fun in this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's uh, let's just start, I guess, very basic. Um, you know, beyond Clash of Clans and YouTube, is there anything you want to share with us personally? You know, about your life beyond um, the microphone and your channel. You, you can be as specific or as non-specific as you want. But is there any kind of information you'd like to share in that regard? Yeah, there's a, there's some information that the people that I lead at Ain't Nobody and then also um, uh, One Hivers know as well as WBTers is that my my name is Kagan. Um, I go by Brutus on, in in the gaming community because it's like my very first in game name that I had since I was like ten years old. I used to use it as a graffiti name as well. Um, I'm originally from Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm in Wisconsin. Go Pack Go. Uh, and I have my life is ran by women. I got a wife and three daughters and a, and a girl cat named Dinosaur. So yeah. Okay. Wow. I didn't didn't know that. So you're a, a busy guy, I guess. Yeah. 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 I I can't make sons for the life of me. <laughs> well, keep trying, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, so how did you uh, get into Clash of Clans? Do you have a big gaming history? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been in the game since since uh, Atari and Nintendo. Um, I, it's Street Fighter too. You know, I've always loved games and always been big into them. Like I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Like Final Fantasy 15, I'm big into that. Destiny as well. Oh man, I can't wait for Destiny 2 to come out. So I've always liked video games. Um, oh, that just went over right over my head. By the way. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. <laughs> There are consoles beyond the PlayStation, just so you know. I am an Xbox guy, but okay, I'll, I'll trust you on that. I right, keep going though. Sorry about the interrupts. <laughs> no, it's funny because I didn't expect you to know what Atari was. Like, I'm even gonna bust. Some people watching this are gonna really know how old I am when I say ColecoVision, and then I'll just leave that there. Um, <laughs> okay. But I've been big into gaming. I'm very competitive. Um, I got into Clash of Clans. Um, I used to have a track phone or a pay like uh, it's where you pay for every use it's not a like AT&T or Verizon phone but my wife um, convinced me to get an iPhone and so I blame her with an iPhone 4 and that's the first application that I downloaded game wise was Clash of Clans this was in 2014 um, it like seemed cool I didn't really didn't understand it too much with farming um, but that's how I downloaded it. So I really blame my wife. Um, and she likes to give me the dirty look whenever I'm playing on the game or whenever I'm doing anything related to the game. And I just remind her that I would never have found out about Clash of Clans. She didn't convince me or I'd like to say force me to get uh, an iPhone. Uh, and let me tell you, clashing on an iPhone 4, oh my gosh, I'm six foot seven. So <laughs> I have ogre hands. And yeah, I have to like zoom in and out for every attack. Oh, it was horrible. horrible wow, I can only out. imagine that. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. Uh, God bless the iPhone 6 um, Plus and iPads. It's the only way to go now. So you're beyond the, the 4 now, I hope? Yeah, I, yes. It, I, and I, I refuse to really attack on my phone. It's all about the iPad. Yeah, yeah. Actually, on that note, I, I have an iPad too, but I stopped using it for attacks because 
it just it renders really slowly. The graphics have gotten slow because it's an iPad 3. So I'm I'm on an iPhone 6, which is I guess adequate. You know, it's not great, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah, I got a six plus. I do like it. Like if I'm at work and I'm on a crunch time and I have to get an attack in and I can't I can't make it home attack on like a big screen. Um, the six plus works. I do like the iPhone um, six. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I had an order of questions, but I think we'll just kind of go out of order as it flows. Cause it made me think of, do you have any like pre attack rituals you do like wash your hands or like rub them together? I know Jake, you could always hear in his videos, him rubbing his hands together. Do you do, you do anything like that? Yeah. It's funny that you picked up on that. I, he's rubbing his hands, to, like he claps and he rubs his hands together a little <laughs> bit. Maybe he rubs his face. You can hear it. You can hear the stubble on his chin. Like he's checking out the base. Like, Hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, for me, um, I still get super, super nervous. Um, my wife would say uh, that I always say, okay, let's get this over with right before I hit attack. Like usually, like I say it three times, I look at my, I look at my attack strategy and memorize, okay, I'm going to do this, then this, then that. And I take deep breaths and then I say, okay, let's get this over with. <laughs> so I would say wish rolls, deep breaths, and I, um, I always say, let's get this over with right before I hit attack. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, I get sweaty palms sometimes. So that's pretty much it. It, <laughs> it, it sounds like this is like public thing. Are you atta attacking in front of your family? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? I have to leave. Like there's, I, it's, I get made fun of for it, but it's because that's what also I love about the game is that you don't get another chance. It's one shot and done. You can't, in one mistake can ruin in a, a whole attack like one tile troop away mm -hmm, so yeah. i have to leave sometimes i go into another room um my wife is really good about like keeping the kid away you know they're like no don't don't touch him don't talk to him for like five minutes just let him do his thing um i have to do that and i have to be quiet uh, when i try to attack alive like whenever i post like a live attack that is what i'm like whenever i'm not recording as well that's exactly what i'm like so it's more of a an accurate uh, like picture of you when you're doing that uh, uh, live. Would you consider ever recording a live attack and putting it on YouTube? I don't have you do that series yet. Yeah, I I did. Um, I, I, they don't always go according to plan. I think I have a few. Um, I did a one of them actually failed, and I still put it out there. It was a suicide royal lalo, and it went right into the teeth of a Tesla farm. And I I knew it was there. It just didn't go according to plan. I will say that attacking when I'm doing it live does add so much more pressure. I don't know about, doesn't it? Because you also put live attacks out there. Right. It? Is um, it more stressful for you? I'd say a little bit. Um, and it's also that factor of when you're doing a live attack or when you're doing an attack without doing it for YouTube, like I kind of think in my head, this is what I'm doing. I take as much time as I need. But as soon as I hit record, it's like I'm my brain's focused on, you know, what I'm saying, articulating, making it, publishable and i might stop thinking about the troops so i can kind of forget things so yeah it is a little bit trickier for sure recording a live attack yeah i don't you don't want to have like 30 seconds of complete silence it reminds me of a power bang video where he did a live uh when he was still town hall nine and he was doing a gola loon um and i remember he got super quiet for like 40 seconds because <laughs> it wasn't going according to plan you could just feel it oh <laughs> He comes back. He's like, I'm so sorry. It got really intense there for a moment. I can totally relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, great. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about how you got into One Hive um, and like, or maybe how you got into comp the competitive war scene if you were in comp like, you know, competitive war clans before One Hive and then how you got into One Hive eventually? Yeah, um, that's a, that's. Uh, a connected story. Um, how I got into the competitive war scene is I'm always competitive by nature. Um, I, I always like to be better than the person that showed me what it is. Like uh, I can play piano. So the person that taught me how to play piano, I've always wanted to be, I strive to be better than them at that. So when someone showed me war, uh, the how I got into it was actually a, um, it, it like a work uh, clan where I was used it as a morale booster. I got people that I lead, um, introduced them to the game. They fell in love to it, in love with it. It's kind of reminded them of chess. That's how I kind of associated it, like a moving chess board. Um, so it was fun to do that. But then when I we we would win some wars, but I was so competitive, I couldn't turn that part of my my personality or brain off. 
that I ended up leaving the work clan that was supposed to be a morale team builder. Oh. <laughs> so I guess your options were either fire everyone and get new employees or go to a different <laughs> clan. <laughs> yeah, that was it. This is back in the days when Reddit was big. So I went went, went looking for Reddit, um, didn't really find anything. Brutus, my, my Tunnel 10 was a Tunnel 8 at the time. Um, I, I found Team WBT... I warred off and on with non-serious work lands, but I found Team WBT from Jake from One Hive's uh, first ever dual hitchhiker video, uh, where it was Team WBT versus ba uh, Ballerwood. Um, I applied there uh, when I was at Town Hall 9 with 1010, I believe is what I had, um, Royals. And I remember Abe Ortiz, the leader there, has told me that he was skeptical to let me in. Um, he was like, if you can't keep your stats up, we're gonna have to say goodbye. I'm like, let me in and let me hit your base. And he had 2020, mm -hmm. so that's when Gola Loon was a first came out before sweepers were out there. So, kind of earned my right to play with the guys at Team WBT and learned so much from there and watching videos like Jake from One Hive, um, even uh, you know Tiger with uh, Nightly Gaming. He had some good videos back in the day. He did. Uh, so I watched him as well, um, and that's how I learned and, and tried to be better. How I got into One Hive was um, I applied for One Hive before Team WBT. I was an 8.5 and I applied to One Hive Genesis, which was the feeder at the time or the Town Hall 8 exclusive for right. One Hive. Um, they said no. I was an 8.5 with um, 1010. And they were like, you know, we're going to think about making an exception. But this is when 0.5 was everywhere, you know, like everybody and their mama was a 0.5. <laughs> so it was really, really saturated. Um, they passed on me, uh, at, uh, and I understand why. I even tried to go to GS96. Same thing. They said, without 2020, come back when you're 2020. So Team WBT gave me a chance to grow. Um, fast forward some time here, and I enjoyed a lot of warring with Team WBT. Got to uh, war against some really good clans. But um, there was some shift in leadership at one point, and I felt some of that shift. And I just... I wasn't enjoying the game as much, and I almost quit um, last year, July, in fact. Uh, rather than quitting, my clan from Ain't Nobody, Sarah, I attribute her, the co-leader there, she's like, you can't quit, just be a weekend warrior. And I was like, all right. So they kind of hung around um, and just casually warred. I applied to One Hive on a whim because I wanted to know if I was ever good enough you know, to compete at that level. Sure. I wanted to be better than than Jake from One Hive Raids, the guy teaching me, <laughs> you know, and, and and no disrespect to the man, um, but that that's that mentality, right? Right, exactly. So, so I applied to them on a whim, did my time at uh, Step uh, Square One, did my time at Prime, and just got lucky. I really just didn't think I was. I applied there when I was twenty twenty, and I think I had nine hundred stars. Learned. I thought I knew something about this game, but when I joined them, I learned so much from them. And it's not just the one hive. It's it's the little it's the little bees. It's the it's the players there. It's Lars. It's Atoma. It's um, it's Duce. It's it's Pero. It's you know the people you war with, right? They taught me little things, and I just that helped me so much. So been there just about six months. Okay, and then I wanted to ask how you got into YouTube. And I know I've heard. Um, other stories of people who started a YouTube channel for Clash of Clans, it was a uh, for job security. So was there ever the the idea that, you know, after Jake stepped down, uh, you know, well, I guess I should ask, was your channel started while Jake was still putting out videos or did you kind of step up to take his role in YouTube and what made you decide to do that? You know, that is that is a very interesting uh, story that I know some people that don't if they don't know this story may assume some things that are totally wrong. Very good question. Um, surprised you asked that. Um, so I had a channel before Brutal Raids. It was called Dot Time for Raids. It before this is when I started. Ain't nobody. Um, it was. I was a Town Hall eight at the time. My my Town Hall ten was, and this is when the Tootsie Roll base came out for Town Hall eight. That was supposed to be anti Dragloon. Okay. And I it, I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but. This is when Dragloon, you know, Jake from One High put that video out there and everybody was Dragloon-ing. It was really good. So Town Hall 8s were designing anti-Dragloon bases, a Tootsie Roll base. Um, and I was watching people from my own clan Dragloon a base. And it was pissing me off. 
I was like, don't do that. Like, look at the base. You know, it's it, use something else. Hog it. Even even Hogo wipe it. You could even go wipe it at Town Hall 8. Just don't drag loon it. Um, that's actually what started my passion for YouTube. I wanted to help others see it a way that I did. And you can only say so much in a chat or in a in a clan chat. So yeah, I used Airshoe, a uh, S H O U, you know, with um, I emoji iOS for whatever non jailbreak. Um, record your iPhone screen, and that's what started it. It was like I basically showing people like this is what I'm talking about when I say how you attack a base. So very much like Jake from One Eye, but. Very much not Jake from One Eye. <laughs> like I was not very great at the game, um, but I was able to help my clan. So that's what it started with. And so when I almost quit, um, I deleted that channel. Like I was done. Like I didn't want to do anything anymore. Um, when I decided to, like, let me just see if I can do One Hive, and I got accepted. I wanted to document document my journey. And I also wanted to share the tips and tricks and techniques that I'm going to learn back home with the clan that I founded, Ain't Nobody, with those guys. And so I, the channel would do that. So be, Jake was still doing Jake from One Hive Raids when I okay. got accepted into Prime. And I asked permission from Cheddar Honcho, who was the leader of One Hive Prime at the time. I have a channel. Are you okay if I show Prime recaps? Because I didn't want to uh, step on Jake's toes. I didn't want to mislead or misrepresent One Hive. I was very respectful of that. I was very cognitive of my place in the totem pole. Uh, so they said, yeah, go for it. Do what you want to do. And I, if you look at my first few videos of Brutal Rage, you can see that. I don't cover any of One Hive. It's all about my attacks. It's all about prime recaps. And then about two or three weeks later, he quit. And it was totally unrelated to me. Um, I got, I, I um, did the best that I could to be the best clanny that I could in Prime. I got an opportunity to to war weight wise. I think you know how that is. You know, you pull from other clans to so you can make, make make weights. So I got a chance with Cold September. It was my first war to come up to One Hive and take a swing. Um, I did my my attacks and I left. In fact, I, I asked if it was okay if I did a halftime report, basically showing the attacks thus far for my channel. And they said, that's totally fine. And I went back to Prime. And when I was done, they shook up the roster and they said, you know, we want KB and One Hive. It's totally fortunate. And I think two, ye two weeks after that is when, or a week or so after that, is when Jake did his video and said, I'm done. Um, and I kind of did my own thing. Uh I didn't want to replace Jake because there's no way I just, that's not me. Um, after some time, after about three to four weeks, I think is when leadership at one hive officially reached out to me and said, would you like to officially start covering the, uh, the recaps? And I, and I said, yes, I, but I, I made a video and said, I'm not Jake's replacement. Um, no, no one ever can. Uh, mm -hmm. I still sub to him. In fact, he made a video. He yeah, no, he did make a video. Yeah, about oh, a different game. Was that game, not yeah. awesome? Was that not? Did you not just like get goosebumps hearing well, him say I, Jake for one eye? So I still have the like the notifications on. So I got it on my phone and I at school or something, and I'm like, okay, what's this? Because um, I hadn't seen that notification in I don't know six months, and <laughs> I, I didn't understand the game at all. It looks similar to Clash of Clans, but it's just good to kind of hear him talking about a game again because he was. Uh, he was definitely someone that really inspired me and helped me kind of form my content. And it was good to see him still, uh, you know, taking advantage of the audience he has. Yeah. Yeah. He still commands like a lot. Like I, I, I went and checked out the game. I mean, that says a lot. He just said, Hey, this is what I'm playing. Why don't you guys go check it out? He still, I, he influenced me. I went to go check out, see what, it, see what it was. And I hope he, um, I hope he keeps going with that. It's, he's a great personality. There's something about that Southern drawl. That I have no problem listening to, regardless of what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's a lot more history though than I had, uh, had, had thought that was going on. But um, so you've been around for a while uh, doing YouTube. It sounds like. Um, so anyway, I want to uh, kind of transition into the uh, into the game a little bit. But I, actually, I want to ask one more question, and that's uh, being a YouTuber. And it seems like you upload pretty much daily. How do you balance the uploads with other responsibilities in life? 
That's a good question. Um, I have a full-time job. This is definitely a hobby. I uh, am in, in analy analytics, I'll say that. Analytics in a Fortune 500 company will say the top three insurance of U U.S. I can't really say who because I know some people I work with sub to my channel and might sub to yours. So I want some an anonymity. Can't say that word. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, anyway, uh, this is a hobby. Uh, I really like helping others be successful at whatever it is they, they do uh, in my personal life, in my home life, and at work. So my hobby, like... I mean, that's why that's why I started the channel in the first place was to help my own clan get better. So I really I really like that, um, and that's the only reason why I do it. I don't. It doesn't really balance. I'm going to be straight up with you. Um, I think there's more of dealing with it. <laughs> there's sometimes I need to. I myself need to recognize I need to slow down playing as often myself and balance it and give my time uh, where it's needed at certain spots, like to my family on on certain times of the weekend. Uh, but there's been a routine like um, like as we record this on a Friday, I, I you know, we just matched three point park and I'm already, you know, hyped for that war. And I know tomorrow I'm going to be attacking. So there's some some routine there. CWL did, but it's um, it's hard. I kind of have to schedule it is what I'll say. Uh, and at times it gets away from me. So if anybody's starting a YouTube channel, my best advice to them is um, do it for reasons that you want to do it. If you want to make this your livelihood and make money off it, make sure you do that and commit to that and put quality product up. If you're doing it casually, don't let it overtake your, your fun life. Um, don't let it, I think someone told me, it was Mrs. Jake, uh, told me don't let it seem like a job. And I know what that's like because I don't want to feel burnout. I don't want to feel like, oh, I got to make a video. The videos that I put up, they're there's stuff I enjoy doing and they don't take me too long to make. So there's still somewhat balance, but I keep reminding myself what Mrs. Jake told me, which is the moment this starts to feel like a job, you need to take a step back. You're doing something wrong. Um, although I know some people do this for their job and make some, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's great. True. But for, for me though, I, I can't, this is, this needs to stay as a hobby and just where I'm at in my life, I need a little bit more stability of an income and, you know, there's, health insurance and all that there's retiring and stuff like that and taxes and whatever just life so i need yeah. to have a real job and this can stay a hobby yeah i i agree with the advice you gave um and it's interesting because i get asked to um and like channel messages and stuff like um hey i want to be a youtuber too how do you do it as a full-time youtuber and it, I, that's just i'm not a full-time this is a, on the, a hobby too so um I think once you start treating it as a job and um, like, you know, put all your time into it and stop doing other things, it kind of loses the value and the reason you did it in the first place. So I think it's, it's good that it, um, that it stays a hobby. Um, and some people do it for a job and that can work out, but I think it, there's a, that element of, uh, you know, you don't know if uh, this game's going to be around for a while and there's always a little bit of uncertainty too, uh, for sure. But uh, anyway, okay, that's all interesting stuff. Uh, I wanted to transition into the game a little bit more, talking about Clash of Clans specifically. So uh, I guess we can just start with kind of a broad question, and I want to get your thoughts on this. What do you think um, of the current balance of war? Talking, you know, Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11. How do you feel war is in general? And uh, what Town Hall levels do you think should be tweaked? Stuff like that. So it's a good question, because I, I have a Town Hall 8, a Town Hall 9, and a Town Hall 10. The 10 is not maxed. It's uh, nowhere near 40-40, uh, but I get to hit 10s and I get to hit 11, so I know what that feels like a little bit. Um, obviously, my 9 is pretty much maxed, just a side of walls and four, uh, five more levels, levels in my BK. And my Town Hall 8, I have level 4 hogs, so that pretty much says that, and, and Dragloon, so it doesn't matter. I'll say Town Hall 8 is broken. It is, um, but I honestly, I'm, I'm jaded. I don't care about Town Hall 8. I think, like, let it be broken, in my opinion, because I don't think war, um, broken in terms of war, three-starring, um, that's all I focus on, really. I don't focus on pu pushing or farming or anything. It's all about clearing the base, which is really difficult to do, um, that achievement. So clearing a Town Hall 8, hog swarming, and it's done. So that it is what it is. It teaches you how to use hogs, at least. At Town Hall 9, though, I think it's, I think it's a bit, you know, I, I think it's okay. 
I think it's balanced is what I'll say. Uh, and why I say this is because it's said with an asterisk, you and I have been using three star strategies nonstop months, maybe even years experience or at least months for sure experience yeah. of doing high end, you know, detail oriented three star strategies. We have all that experience. So what may seem easy for us is not easy for others. Um, the war community is a small slice of the mobile users that play this game. Um, and at the level that we do is even smaller. The community is awesome. So it feels bigger because there's a lot of excitement there. But so I think nine is at a good spot. Do I think it's easy for you and I? Absolutely. I think um, hogs got easier. And I think after that, runes got easier. Lalo. So air and ground are, they're not automatic. Um, they still apply some some thought to a process to it. Like they can still be stopped. Nobody's hitting hundred percent clears. I know that for a fact at our level. Um, so I think it's okay because of the wide range of users it's for. Um, for town hall 10, I think it's in a good spot. I think it's not, I think 10 is heading towards this place of where nine is. And what I mean that by that is a couple of months, I say a year ago, not a couple of months, a year ago, nine was perfect. It yeah, was perfect, but then they added new troops and new de uh, defenses so uh, and new levels and, and dark spells. When that happened, it got a little bit easier and some people started saying, oh, it's broken and all that crap. But with, with Town Hall 10, I think it's in a good spot with air because we're seeing a lot more threes happen on a regular basis. I think why I like 10 and I think it's heading towards where what we used to say about nine back in the day being perfect is because nine was perfect back in the day because of the variety it had. Like you could look at any base and it didn't matter what the layout was. You had a viable option for it. That wasn't the, um, in comparison to like town hall 10, um, a, a year ago or six months ago, you would just use the boner attack. No matter what it was, it was an automatic boner attack. And that was it. You tried anything else and it probably wouldn't work or mass valves. So you, you had with Town on Nine, you have so much more options to clear a base. So with that same analogy to tens, back in the day, you couldn't really hog a base. A, you know, a goho, a hobo, you really did not see that at Town Hall 10. Post updates and hog levels, you started to see that. The nerf to the giant bomb, it kind of helped that. Um, it got we stopped seeing mass miners, we stopped seeing mass bowlers, we stopped seeing mass anything really um, as often. And we started to see now the increase of air for Town Hall 10 with what they intended, I think, they, to do with the loons uh, and the extra levels for the Hound, which was intended for 11, but how it helped 10s. Mm -hmm. I just think ground needs more love for Town Hall 10. So with all that said, I think one more step in the, in the right direction to help balance ground viability for Town Hall 10s. And I think Town is in a, would be in a, I'll call it an addictive spot. And and when what I mean by that is, you're a Town Hall 10. You could probably relate to this. When yeah. You couldn't clear a Town Hall 10 when you first became a Town Hall 10. Now you can. And once you get that taste where you can regularly clear a Town Hall 10, that's addicting, is it not? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's just over the last few weeks, ever since the, uh, the I'd say the update that buffed Loons a little bit. And um, it was mainly a Town Hall 11 update. But since that update... I uh, there, there's so much more possibility and we're seeing the bottom uh, uh, tens and even some of the middle tens being consistently three starred by town hall tens, which is something we haven't seen. I don't think at all beforehand in the history of clash. Yeah, it's, it's really encouraging is what I saw. Um, but then that leads you to the, to the last part, town hall 11 and I'm not an 11, but I have hit max 11 offense, not often, but, and you, I know you have too. And I freaking hate it. I hate hitting max 11 offenses um but i think um i don't know what they meant to do with the walls uh, like their whole here you can only upgrade 50 and i think they're what they're doing is they're going to say in the future these unique walls are going to have a utility to them i think that might be and i'm speculating i think you're, these, i think you're right though I, I believe that was part of the announcement was these 50 walls there's a cap on it for a reason because they're going to have some additional function. Uh, what that is, is um, anyone's guess. It's a mystery still. Yeah, but it, it would still be helping defense. Like, I don't see how that utility any way would help offense. And I think 11 uh, attack, 
for ground specifically, because air I think is 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 in a good spot. But the ground, and that's where whenever you're doing an air attack, no one cares about the walls. Uh, maybe for that first push, maybe that's where it comes in with the uh, wall breaker for that first layer. But but is it supposed to be unjumpable or unbreakable, you know, type of deal? So that only means that it would help the defense of the Town Hall 11. And I think 11 air is a good spot. Like it's it's hard, but we're seeing some 11 on 11 three stars and they're usually air now. Uh, they're still not gimmies, but they're, it's it's a viable option. With ground, though, because of what they did to the Eagle, um, nerfing the Golem to the ground, and they try to counteract that by adding another level for it, I don't think it was enough. Um, I still think ground on 11 on 11 is probably the hardest thing in the game right now to try to pull down a even a two-star. I mean, people are struggling with that. So I think um, what I... I, I if, if people are claiming that the Lalo is, is too overpowering up top, then I think maybe the Eagle should do extra damage to the Hound as well as it does the Golem. If if they were so worried about the Golem easily getting to the Eagle and taking it out, that's what's happening with Lalo, with the with the Hound. It just hit me, baby, one more time. It doesn't matter. You get two volleys off, and that's it, and the Loons will eventually get there. And it, I think it should do extra. If you're going to basically say, I'm going to nerf the Golem for ground attacks at 11, then you might as well apply that same debuff or extra damage to the other tank uh, on the air attack. Yeah, I think that Town Hall 11, uh, talking about three stars, it's definitely become uneven uh, for a large part because the Eagle is uh, pretty powerful against the Golem uh, with the extra damage, but it's not it's not a huge factor against the Lava Hound, which is interesting because you watch the replays and... It'll be on a lava hound, but it's just not gonna do a whole lot to <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's and it doesn't get many balloons because it's a very small splash uh, radius. Um, one thing I wanted to point out that you talked about um, a little bit back is the the walls. I actually I was thinking about this a while back, and I think that the the walls could have some air implications. They could be like. Um, I they guess can't path it, over it. Maybe? Yeah, invisible. I mean, it, that oh, would be way that'd too be OP. That'd be too OP for sure. But maybe it deals a little bit of damage, or they have a delay as they go through it. Oh yeah, like they slow down going through it. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, um, or it takes away any spell effect they have. I don't know. There's endless possibilities, but um, that might be cool. And the, the door's still open for Supercell to choose how they want to do it because nothing's been implemented yet. So right. Um, so you talked a lot about Town Hall Eleven. Do you think that Town Hall 11, three stars should be easier? Um, do you think it's okay where it is? Um, I, it sounds like you want ground and air to be a little more uh, similar in as far as how powerful they are. But do you think they should eventually be more viable or they should be about as viable as we're seeing with the air attacks right now? So I think air has always been overpowering compared to ground. It, it, since the introduction of uh, ballooning air has always been and and it's for those that are not familiar as to why the issue with that or knows a little bit more of the details like you and i do is it's the sheer defensive troops uh sorry defensive buildings and defensive traps there is more on ground than there is for air so that's the reason why mathematically you got 20 uh, just roughly i got 20 defenses that can shoot at me for ground versus 10 for air rough gross analogy but that's basically it um, same thing with like springs. They can fly three hogs in the air, right? If I go to a go hole, but there's no one trap or building that's going to, um, uh, fly three of my loons instantly like that, right. uh, for, you, you know? So that's basically the, why it's so OP. Uh, what I'd like to see primarily are two things. The balance is make ground is, is viable of an answer for an attack as much as air. I think they were trying to balance that with nine with the introduction of the sweeper, which I think was a step in the right direction. It was a, an extra defense, kind of like what we were just what I was just describing. That was specific for air to try to make that harder, and I think it did its job. Maybe an extra level for the sweeper might be an interesting thought uh, to try to maybe if we can't bring ground to the bat level that uh, air is, maybe we can bring down uh, the uh, bring up the difficulty for air so that it's equal that way by making it harder to do air versus ground. Um, and it evens that way. So I'd like to see air and ground be both um, in a viable option to use at every town hall level, kind of like how nine is. Like not, we don't always see Lalo's in every single war. Sometimes it's still not the right answer, the best way to take down that base. Um, 
but I also think that Supercell that would really, really help the war community is if they would equalize the weighting algorithm of offense versus defense. Um, I think that would bring a better uh, lifestyle or better quality of gameplay. Um, Cause I know everybody listening to this and you and I also um, can feel that when we ran them spin and in fact, I'm going to do a recap if it's not posted already, where we you match, they have 11 extra um, or six extra Town Hall 11 offenses. I mean, it's just nobody wants to play like, like that. And I think if they balance that out, you'll see a more balanced base being developed uh, because people just won't, you know, it might be the depth of 0.5s, but I think that'll still be around. But I think if they did those two things, it would have impacts on war bases as well as war strategies because people just it'll end engineering as well that's um those are the two things i like to see them do yeah and one thing to add on to that that um supercell of course can make these changes but base building itself just in terms of the base meta being advanced uh, through what works and what doesn't trial and error that also helps balance if there's a little bit of discrepancy then bases might um, say if air is a little bit too powerful bases defend a little more against air and by virtue of that it balances the game out so there's a little bit of room for error for supercell but i agree that um town hall 11 might need a tweak or two yeah it's i i would love to see ground be just as sexy as of an attack to watch as lalo that clone lalo is still nice to see though yeah, I mean, it's good just to see any types of Town Hall 11 three stars um, because it's the first time uh, really since it was added that we have. Um, okay, so that's mainly why I wanted to talk about Clash of Clans related. I want to start to wrap this up a little bit because uh, we're going pretty long now, uh, but this has been great, uh, awesome information. I wanted to ask, uh, do you plan on ever doing a face reveal uh, for like a 10K subs or something like that? If that's the if that's the going rate is 10K, yeah, I'll do it. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to a face review uh, at all. In fact, uh, people in my in the clans of Ain't Nobody and also One Hive, they see what I look like. I'm I'm sexy as all get out. Man. <laughs> okay, I guess nothing <laughs> to hide then. Um, so yeah, I, I did a 10k too. Um, so awesome. Once again, thanks for doing this. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. Do you have anything else you want to say to uh, to the huge audience I command? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Good luck to your channel, and I'm a fan. Thank you. Yeah, I hope to maybe have you back on again sometime in the future, and uh, good luck to you as well. Uh, your channel has been growing a lot, and you know I wish you the best of luck with that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. In the comments, make sure to let me know what you think uh, about this series, and if it gets a good reaction, I'll continue it and try to bring on some more interesting guests. Uh, so that'll do it for this one. Till next time, bisectatron. And Brutus out.